Well, welcome to uh, lesson number 12 in which we're going to build an animated character called the Little Blue Pony. And uh, the parts of the pony are uh, pretty simple. Uh, we're not going to uh, have a lot of joints, just four leg joints at the hip and uh, no knee or neck or tail or uh, anything like that. So that it's going to make it easy to uh, implement and give you the idea. Be sure and download the new software as always. You may wonder why we have new software pretty much every time and the reason is that we have new capabilities uh, being added with every version as well as uh, bugs that are fixed. The uh, parts of the horse are a body, four legs, the mane, and two eyes. We're going to use polygon extrusion to generate the pony and basically the reason we use polygons is that that's the basic primitive of the graphics engine that is in all the different computers. Uh, if you take a triangle and add edges and edges and edges and edges, eventually you end up with a polygon that looks very much like a circle or a pure curved surface. You can see in the example that the polygon, when it's extruded, has two sides and a wrapper. The uh, glut call basically takes a, a width of the uh, wrapper part and then the XY coordinates. The uh, previous example uh, has a list of the XY coordinates that are used for the body. The glut call returns two call list IDs and you can combine call list uh, usage into other call lists, into other call lists, and by rotating the leg joints at the hip, uh, we get a animated pony, as is illustrated. The pony walks in a circle, for which we use the GL translate call. Uh, be sure to take a look at OGL slash pony dot text, which uh, is the program for this example. And the two variables are leg ang angle and speed. Uh, all of the four legs can be related to a single leg angle, and the speed basically determines the rate of rotation or how fast the pony moves in a circle. In implementing a character, we'd like to have it correspond to um, actions that would be found in the real world. So uh, you need to go to uh, Wikipedia uh, and look up horse gates. Uh, the gate that we've implemented is trotting, which is moving the legs in uh, diagonal pairs. But there's also walking and jumping and galloping uh, each of which move the legs in different configurations. Examine the following code which uh, implements the trotting and uh, you'll see that the leg angle increments to a maximum uh, rotation and then basically it reverses by a step to go to a negative maximum. Uh, we do the glut post redisplay to cause the uh, pony polygon to be rendered again uh, which gives the appearance of walking. Now we're ready to take our bottom up code which is just sort of a quick and dirty implementation and create a pony object. So take a look at OGL pony2.txt. We have data structures uh, as before as well as methods or actions and the data structures that we're going to use are a body and a left front leg color uh, just uh, for variety's sake. Uh, XY coordinates for the body, the main uh, front leg uh, and a back leg. Uh, we're going to have a list of XY coordinates for each of those. Uh, we only need one of each pair of legs. Uh, we're going to get display list IDs for the pony, the front leg, and the back leg, and we're going to get two of them for the sides and the wrapper. 
uh, the pony object uh, actions or methods are going to be load, which is called once per class to initialize it, and init, which is called once per object to initialize that object. Then we have a draw, which takes a front leg angle, a front right angle, a back left angle, and a back right angle. Different angles can place the pony in different positions, which is how we get trotting, etc. Um, and uh, we can also rotate the pony to cause it to go up or down for jumping. The uh, following slide shows the pony initialization for a circular trot. Uh, we do the load, uh, then we do the init with uh, brown uh, for the body color, blue for the leg color, uh, and then set uh, some angle limits and step sizes and a speed value. Uh, notice that leg angle starts out at zero, but we could start it uh, at any rotation that we wanted. Then to draw the pony, we have to uh, render all the different uh, polygons by uh, locating uh, where we want to draw it. Uh, we draw the pony with the leg angles uh, using the draw method. And then we update the leg rotation angle uh, delay for a certain period of time, otherwise the pony would go way too fast. And uh, that generates the view that you saw in the previous video. Um, we use the cosine and sine to get uh, positions on the circumference of the circle. Uh, then we do a, uh, a translate and uh, rotate in the Y plane and uh, then we uh, update the angles. Notice that we have the opposite uh, diagonal legs going opposite directions and that is defined as the trot. Well, the result works but it has some problems from a software engineering standpoint. First, it violates encapsulation. The implement details are not all in the object, which is uh, very desirable. Uh, we would like to encapsulate all the global state variables in the object, so the X position, Z position, walk angle, speed, delta walk, leg max, and the four leg angles should all be uh, moved into state variables and then we can add accessor functions which will retrieve the values of those variables and mutator uh, methods or actions which will set, compute, or change those variables. You never want to combine drawing and updating the state variables in a single method. And the reason is that for optimization purposes, uh, or just because the eye can't see it, you may not want to draw uh, a particular state, but you do need to update the state so that the character keeps moving or whatever its actions are. Um, with just one method, you would always have to draw, which could be time consuming. I'd like you to fix Pony2.txt to uh, have the indicated updates. Uh, try implementing a Pony.txt command that can be used with some of the others that we have. And modify Game2.txt to melt the snow people with a red hot pony. And you're going to need to change glue look at so that instead of looking out of the pony's eye, you're looking over the pony's tail.